quando sono scappata dall'Africa. After I escaped from Africa, I had to create a job for myself. A bit like a pioneer, I guess. Quasi che sono una pioniera. She's proof that if there's a will, there's a way. Tutto riesce. This is the village of Frasilongo, in the Valle de Mocheni, in the northern Italian province of Trentino. Agitu Idea Gudita came to Italy as a refugee eight years ago. Since then, she's built up a goat milk cheese business from scratch. When she first arrived, a lot of people in the valley didn't quite know how to react to her. They're not used to seeing strangers and they're certainly not used to seeing black women. But she's very open and very honest. And I noticed over time, people grew quite fond of her. She's a very important part of the community now, and I'm glad she's here. <laughs> Miss Cinnamon? Sitting around in the muck again, were you? How dare you? Nice girls don't do that. How'd it go today, Zacharia? Okay? Zacharia suddenly landed 180 girlfriends. All goats. Oh, no. Right? Just about. <laughs> Agitu first lived in Italy after graduating from high school, when she got a scholarship and came to Trento to study sociology at the university. Then she went back to Ethiopia, but returned to Italy in 2010, this time as a political refugee, and came up with the idea of starting a goat cheese business. My ancestors were nomadic shepherds. It's part of my family tradition. And I've worked on various projects that involved sustainable agriculture. Most of those projects dealt with nomadic shepherds. It was during this time that I developed a very special relationship with the goats. I'm really passionate about them. You get to know their character and the quality of their milk. And that creates a strong bond. When I came back to Italy, I was impressed right away with all the open green space. There was a lot of abandoned pasture land. And that's when I got the idea to start raising local breeds of goat, like the Petata Mocena from the Valle de Mocheni. There were hardly any of them left at the time. I started with 15 goats. Now I have 180 that provide milk. So, quite a herd. I chose this indigenous breed because it adapts perfectly to the local environment, and I wanted this project to be as authentic as possible. Zakaria! What do you think of them? Beautiful. 
Beautiful. So you've gotten used to your surroundings. Yes. Is it like being home? Yeah. Really? So you're happy? Yeah. Great. Back in his homeland, he worked as a shepherd. So he's used to cows, sheep and goats. When I asked him to work for me, he agreed right away. It's his first day on the job, poor guy. But he'll get used to it. <laughs> Almost all the shepherds who work for Agitu are refugees. Zakaria has lived in Italy for nearly four years now. An NGO connected him with Agitu. I really like this kind of work. And I not only like it, I know it. Back home, kids start working with animals at the age of five. It's not like here, where kids go to school. Refugees are resilient people. This work is physically demanding and the hours are long. But they can handle it. On the other hand, the Italian young people who take an interest in this work are really enthusiastic at first. They want to change their lives, the natural surroundings and the goats are beautiful. But that enthusiasm usually doesn't last long. These refugees have made it through the desert and across the sea, and that's made them tougher. And they want to make something of themselves as well. The Valle de Mocheni has always been sparsely populated, but in recent years, many of its residents have moved away. Agitu lets her goats graze in the unused communal pastures that she leases. She started this job as a sideline, but it's now turned into full-time work. I came to Italy the first time to study, then I came back in 2010 because I had to leave Ethiopia. The political situation had become unacceptable. Some of us had fought back against a neo-colonial practice called land grabbing. That's when the government takes over private farmland and gives it to multinational investors and companies. Soldiers just show up on private property and say, an investor wants your land, so you have to leave now. We organized peaceful protests against this practice, but troops often turned up and fired at the demonstrators. A lot of people were arrested, and some were tortured. Since the 1990s, the Ethiopian government has favored economic progress over human rights. In 2015 and 2016, security forces killed more than a thousand people and imprisoned tens of thousands more. A state of emergency was finally lifted in 2018, but freedom of expression remains restricted, and the use of torture in prisons is widespread. I stayed in that situation until 2010. Then things got so dangerous that I basically had to leave overnight for my own safety. I was really lucky because, as an ex-student, I still had all my Italian residence papers. I still had friends in Trentino who took me in. That was a huge help those first few weeks, when I was just trying to sort myself out and recover. And then, little by little, you pick yourself up and start over again. <laughs> Twice a day, fresh goat's milk is brought down from the mountain to Agitu's small dairy in the village. Ariana comes from a village nearby. She started working here as an intern a few days ago. She wants to learn the secrets of making goat cheese firsthand. 
So, let's make Robiola. Robiola is a soft, ripened cheese. Agitu explains that she reuses Robiola whey in her cheese-making process. Whey is full of enzymes, and they react with the milk. This mixture is left to coagulate and create curds for 24 hours. I always say you either like your work and you keep at it, or you hate it and quit. I took several courses on how to make cheese in France, and then I tried to figure out what people here might like. Right now I make 15 different kinds of cheese, so I can meet varying tastes and fill lots of different orders from customers. Aguitu's cheese dairy is called La Capra Felice, or the Happy Goat. It's won several awards, including one from the Slow Food Organization. And her cheese products were chosen to represent the region at the Milan Expo. The reason why she went to France to study cheesemaking is simple. There are hardly any goats left in Trentino, so I'm a pioneer when it comes to goat cheese. Here, all the courses are focused on making cheese from cow's milk, or at least they were when I started out. And the French are the best at making goat's milk cheese. So I thought I'd better go right to the source. The world of cheese making is rather special. You have something green that then gets turned into something white. And cheese changes every day. This is fresh primosale. A week from now, it'll taste completely different because it will have matured. So, yes, we feel these cheeses are special. They are little treasures. <laughs> Today is market day in Trento, the nearby provincial capital. Aguitu often sells her cheese products here. I try to meet the highest organic standards, so I only sell my cheese in this region. It just makes sense to consume local food locally. I've had several requests to ship cheese to other locations, but I won't do it. I sell my cheese here at the local market and at the dairy. People who want to buy it should come here and enjoy a vacation at the same time. Agitu earns a good living by selling her cheese, and she invests the profits in new projects. For example, she recently started a line of natural cosmetics made with goat's milk. Tourists who travel to the Valle de Mocheni are also welcome to visit the farm and spend a day with the goats. We often organize guided tours. Entire families come here to see the pasture area. It's instructive for the children because they learn where the cheese that they enjoy at home actually comes from. I value this type of direct relationship between the producer and the consumer. I use a lot of gestures to get the goats to do what I want. 
For example, when I get to a good pasture and I want them to sit down, I do this. Do you and Agito speak the same language? I speak Fula. Anagitu? Agi? I don't know. She's from Ethiopia and I'm from Mali. What about when you talk to the goats? Agi speaks Italian to them. Come on now, move! But I don't. I like it when you mix people from different cultures. That way you get to know each other. People learn not to be afraid of each other. I enjoy interacting with people and getting to know them. Agitu lives in the former priest's residence in the village of Frasilongo. Today she's going to meet the local mayor, Bruno Groff. The mayor uses EU funding to reclaim abandoned pastures that Agitu would like for her goats to graze on. We'll cut down all of the red spruce trees over there and some of the larches too. That will create some nice open space and a really good pasture. Right. You can see how the undergrowth really opens up here. Exactly. The remote Valle de Mocheni has felt the effects of rural depopulation. Now Mayor Groff is trying to turn the tide by developing innovative agricultural projects. We used to have four to five thousand people in the valley. Now it's just two thousand. In the 1970s and 80s, the politicians urged people to move to the cities to work in the factories. So a lot of people did. And that led to things not being maintained and a sharp decline in local events and cultural life in general here. We're trying to reverse that trend by recreating the kind of life that our ancestors lived. We've had some success with that. We got Agitu, for instance, who came to us like a bolt out of the blue. We hope that she'll be able to inspire some of the local young people. Right now, there aren't a lot of job opportunities for them here. She's a real asset for our community, and we're glad that she's here. We hope that she can serve as an engine that will help to drive the local economy. Agitu has big plans for the building housing her dairy. It was built 30 years ago as a kindergarten. But it was never used because so many people had moved away. Agitu wants to expand the dairy and to convert the top floor into guest rooms for tourists. There's a lot of room up there and I want to put it to good use. But this will be a huge project from an economic point of view. And I can't do it by myself. I don't want to take on too much debt. So I came up with the idea of having visitors pay for their stay in advance. Then they can come to the village and spend some time here. They get to know us. And they participate in this project. Akito has had to wade through a lot of red tape to move ahead with the guest house project. 
Plus, some local officials are skeptical about the community-driven financing proposal. And there's another problem. Packs of wolves have moved into the area. They've already killed a number of sheep and calves in a nearby valley. The return of these wolves is a very sensitive topic right now. It's become politicized too. It's a new problem for us and we'll definitely have to deal with it. I believe there's room for all kinds of animals here. Farmers can't have a monopoly on the land and simply get rid of the wolves. I think we should take a look at managing wolf reproduction. Otherwise, they'll multiply like wild dogs or feral cats. Agitu doesn't want to put her goats behind the security fences recommended by the EU because then the animals would have less space to wander. She came up with an alternative solution. We use an alarm system that includes firecrackers and a timer. Every night starting at 10, a firecracker goes off every half hour. When the wolves hear that noise, they think there are people around and they stay away. That's worked so far and we hope it will continue to work. In the summer of 2018, after a right-wing populist party joined Italy's new coalition government, there was an increase in attacks on immigrants. Akitu, who remains invested in politics, is very worried about this development. I'm a successful businesswoman and I stick to a close circle of friends here, so it doesn't affect me personally. I haven't heard any racist remarks or experienced any discrimination. But overall, the political climate in Italy is pretty worrying. Our interior minister spouts ridiculous claims about immigrants all day long. So some people feel they now have the right to attack people who have a different skin color. I'm not afraid for myself, but we have to take a clear stand against this. In Ethiopia, my grandparents used pitchforks to fight the Italian fascist invaders. But the current generation of Italians seems to have fallen asleep. We have to make our voices heard and put a stop to this before it spreads further. Agitu believes that farming could offer job opportunities for refugees throughout Europe. We have a lot of land that we don't use and a lot of unemployed young people. They're just sitting around doing nothing. But the politicians have no vision. They don't see that these young people are a valuable resource. They have skills, stamina, and they want to work. So why not create environmentally sustainable projects in deserted rural areas like this one? But not everyone wants to live in remote parts of the country. Zakaria is happy to be here and to have found a good job, but when he arrived in Italy, he had other plans. My future in Italy is still uncertain. The first thing I wanted to do when I got here was to go to school and learn something. I still do. But right now, I don't have the time. Zakaria, have you seen these berries? This red fruit? They taste great. They're in season right now. There are strawberries and raspberries, too. Oh. 
ospite non mi sento neanche un po' per I don't feel like a guest casa. here. Absolutely mi not. Piace, si sta bene. I feel right at home. I get along well with the local residents. I haven't had any trouble at all. Still, I realize my presence must be a little invasive. Since I don't come alone, I come with my entire herd. Okay, let's go. Hey, what are you trying to do there? Hitch a ride? See you tomorrow.